Good afternoon. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Colossians chapter 2. Today we're going to engage in a bit of a breakdown of a particular verse within Colossians chapter 2. We're going to be breaking down, analyzing quite extensively verse 8 in Colossians chapter 2. But I'd like us to read verses 1 on to verse 8 for a little context, okay? So, please get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along in the scriptures with me as we read, word for word, verse by verse. Follow me along. Don't just sit there passively on your duff doing nothing, okay? This is not for your amusement or entertainment, all right? Please follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Check me out, okay? Please follow me along. And I'm going to address you as though you are. Okay, you understand? This ain't, this ain't milk that we're going to be engaging in today, okay? This is not milk. This is meat, okay? So, Colossians chapter 2, we're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 8. And like I said, we are going to be picking apart verse 8 quite, <laughs> quite methodically. <laughs> but... Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 8, beginning at verse 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Interesting to note about Laodicea, okay? Go to Revelation chapter 2. Oh, no, wait, 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 that's, excuse me. Revelation chapter 3, okay? Revelation chapter 3. Our Lord sends a rebuke to the church of the Laodiceans, okay? And you got to remember the seven churches that are described in the book of Revelation chapter uh, 2 and 3, uh, predominantly, um, can also describe types of people, okay? A, a type of person, and a person is a spirit, soul, and body, okay? You got to remember that also when you're looking at this, so keep this in mind. But let's read about what is said of the Laodiceans, okay? Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 on to verse, oh, let's read 20, on to verse 20. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Meaning he's the creator. Okay? Meaning he's the creator. The beginning of the creation of God. It began with Jesus Christ um, bringing things into fruition. God said, the word made flesh. Okay? <clears throat> I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. Absolutes. Black and white. No middle ground. You, you're either on the Lord's side or you're on the side of the devils. There's no middle ground. So much of what his Christianity seeks that middle ground. And there ain't one. It's either... Or with our Lord. It's very simple. It's very simple. You either is or you ain't. It's very simple. Okay? I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. Pick your side. <laughs> okay? You're either for the Lord and what he saith in the scriptures, or you're of this world, a Christian, about your feelings, about your traditions, about your holy days. 
You're either on the Lord's side uh, via the scriptures, or you're not. Okay? But our Lord says, I would thou wert cold or hot. Pick a side and stick to it. Don't be wishy-washy. Okay? So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew, vomit, puke. You make the Lord sick. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Rather to be hot or cold. Rather, pick your side. Okay? Hey, these the devil coadjutors who are King James Bible believing Christians and all these other guys who are coadjutors who work for the Vatican who are devils, at least they have chosen their side. At least they have. Okay? They're not on the side of the Lord, but at least they have made a choice. And remember, if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice, hence lukewarm. And the Lord would rather you either or, hot or cold. Lukewarm? God doesn't do lukewarm. It, it makes him sick. He wants to barf, puke, vomit, sick. Okay? Let's continue. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Blind, having eyes to see but see not. Naked, you're covered with a covering but not of the spirit but of your own works and of your own flesh and of your own doings. Okay? I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Gold. More precious than rubies? The authorized version of the scriptures? But no, yea, hath God said with your Jesuit trained cemeterians and your Bible scholars. Wow. Yeah. That thou mayest be rich and white raiment, raiment, excuse me, that thou mayest be clothed and you will be washed white in the blood of the Lamb. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Let's finish the whole chapter while we're at it, okay? To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. There's only one throne, okay? Only one throne, people. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, capital S, saith unto the churches. Excuse me one second. Okay, sorry about that. I thought I turned off the thing on my phone there. So that's a very interesting thing to read about the church of the Laodiceans. Okay? And now go back to Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea. Laodicea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Was the church of the Laodiceans at the time, at Paul, when Paul was writing this, was that valid? Were they, you know, as bad as they refer, referred to? And the book of Revelation, I believe so. Prove it, okay. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So in Christ Jesus, who is God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit, 
in whom are hid all the treasures. Better than much fine gold. Better than rubies. Okay? Buy gold of me tried in the fire. The fire of papal persecution upon the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Okay? In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and knowledge. See, true fear of the Lord will lead to knowledge knowing things. You can have, you can have knowledge without any fear of the Lord. Hence, people become philosophers. Which is something that obviously, I believe, the Church of the Laodiceans was... Um, having problems with. Because if you've read any philosophy, it, it's nothing but um, technical sounding, yea hath God said, hence making you neither hot nor cold. Okay? But it is in Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And the Holy Ghost, who is the comforter, the Lord is that spirit, will guide you into all truth. Okay? What is truth? Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word of tr is truth. Thy word, singular. There's only one. The rest are all Bibles. Okay, let's continue. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in spirit, in the spirit, joining and beholding your order, and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Abide in him. See, when you come to him on his terms and he saves you, you are permanently sealed until the day of redemption. Eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. You're, you're not going to lose what you can't lose because it's not yours to lose, okay? So walk ye in him. He lives with you if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of God, a new creature in Christ Jesus, okay? The Lord lives within you, okay? He ain't going anywhere. But what you do is obey what he says. And walk according to as he says. Now, that doesn't do anything for your salvation because if you are sealed, you're going to heaven. But see, what that does is affect your standing and also the honor of our Lord. Because remember, as I've told you many times, the way you serve Christ reflects Christ. Okay? And... These coadjutors are surely serving their Christ quite well. Yeah, that man of sin, the son of perdition. But let's continue. Rooted and built up in him. Okay. And established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. And in all things, give thanks, whether it be good or whether it be evil, okay? In all things, give thanks, okay? Now, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. And vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So the buildup is up onto verse 8. And then, of course, in verse 9, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? Godhead bodily. The fullness of the Godhead 
bodily. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Okay? But, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Beware! Beware! Go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. Uh, Genesis, excuse me. Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24. First reference. Beware. Genesis chapter 24 verses, where are you? <laughs> verses 1 on to verse 6. Genesis chapter 24 verses 1 on to verse 6. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord. The hand under my thigh thing was a sign, it was kind of a, like a, you know, a handshake kind of a thing, you know, something like that. There, you sick people, there was nothing of any type of sodomite thing involved there, okay? Have you ever run into that one before with this, Okay. Just be aware. That was very similar to us. You know, you know how people <laughs> and then they shake hands. Let's shake on it. It's similar to that. There was nothing um, sodomite involved there. If you've ever run across that, it's amazing when people start um, getting a hold of you. What kind of things you hear? <laughs> it really is. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my, camp, my country, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. So Abraham was warning his servant, don't take, obviously as we just saw, don't take someone from my son of the Canaanites where we dwell, but go to my kindred. Okay? Yes, yes, stay within the bounds of your kindred. It's a very good idea, <laughs> very good idea. Now, granted, this is because this is the, you got to remember this, this is because the Hebraic line was being established. So to go outside of that would be very bad. But this is the beginning of the Hebraic line. So you got to keep that in mind as why, as one of the reasons one of the reasons why Abraham said that, okay? Well, let's continue. Verse 5. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? And here it is. And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou bring not my son hither again. Don't go back that way. Don't bring him hither again. Don't take for, for you as the church of God, which is the church of the living God, that which is amongst the lost, amongst the world, and try to call it your own or to Christianize it. Okay? Okay? But that's the first appearance of the word beware. And look at the context of it. It's in context of not going to your surroundings to be yoked onto someone or something, okay? It's going back to your own. Hence, for our instruction and in righteousness as the church of God, the church of the living God, we are to want fellowship with one another. We are in the world, not of the world. We don't go on to the world for fellowship, for comfort, or any of such like, okay? That's the instruction and in righteousness there, okay? And also, beware, go to Exodus chapter 23, okay? So a beware of mingling yourself with, within the world for our instruction and in righteousness, okay? 
But if you are to be sustained, go to your kindred. And that respects. Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. Verses 20 on to verse 23. Exodus chapter 23. Verses 20 on to verse 23. Behold. I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, which the children of Israel did in the wilderness constantly, which unfortunately you and I as the church of the living God do constantly, don't we? Unless you're super pious. Righteous, you know, <laughs> unless you have the evidence of the uh, Holy Ghost by the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues or whatever nonsense. Yeah. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not. Provoking. Beware. Okay. For he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him. Okay, you got to remember at the time when this was written, okay, this was before this dispensation. This was uh, the giving of the law, okay, this was a new dispensation, okay, because they were transitioning from the time of the patriarchs onto the current dispensation that we are looking at currently in scripture we are looking at, okay, not that this is the dispensation of today, but they were transitioning, okay. Okay, you got to keep that in mind. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. So, first mention of beware. Beware about bringing Isaac uh, back that way thither or finding for Isaac someone uh, within the land they dwelt and not from their kindred, okay? Number one. Number two here, uh, to beware this angel. Ooh, I wonder who that was. L Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? To beware this individual in a different dispensation where it was faith and works, okay? Not the dispensation that we are in today. You got to remember that. You got to rightly divide the word of truth, okay? But told to beware this angel before thee. Okay, why? Because he wouldn't what? Beware of him and obey his voice. Do what he says. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice. And do all that I speak. Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies. And an adversary unto thine adversaries. So, beware about mingling within the world for our instruction and in righteousness. And beware here, number two, beware of provoking the Lord to anger. Hmm? Now, of course, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us, cleanseth us from all sin. Absolutely, amen, amen, amen. This was a totally different dispensation, not the dispensation we are in today, okay? This is for... Doctrine is what pertains on salvation and being right with God within the current dispensation. Okay? That's what doctrine is. Instruction in righteousness is how to live as the church of God or as a child of God. Okay? That's the difference between doctrine and instruction in righteousness. All right? Unfortunately, I do know that there are some of you that are confused on that, okay? You needn't be, okay? You needn't be, okay? Okay, just, just so you know, okay? But we see this as be wearing, to not provoke, and to obey. So, so far, not mingling amongst worldly people for our instruction in righteousness, you got to remember, this was a different dispensation. This was the beginning of the period of the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works. Okay? You got to remember that. But, number one, with Abraham, 
which which with Abraham, okay, which with Abraham, that was the dispensation of the patriarchs. So even there, beware of not mingling yourself with others like that of the world, okay, for our instruction in righteousness. But also, again, not mingling outside of your kindred. If you're a Ham, if you're a Hamite, stay within Ham. If you're a Japhethite, stay within Japheth. If you're a Shemite, stay within Shem. Very simple. Okay? Very simple. But also deeper. What uh, fellowship hath light with darkness? What fellowship hath Christ with Belial? Okay? Okay? You with me so far? All right? Now, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Okay? Deuteronomy, come on. Deuteronomy chapter 6. So, beware for our instruction in righteousness, mingling yourself with the things of the world, with people of the world, okay? Staying within your own kindred. Number two, beware of provoking uh, the Lord and do what he says, okay? Beware of that. And right here, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 10 on to verse 16. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. Okay? The, Abraham, the Hebraic line is established at this time. The Hebraic line. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Hebraic line. Remember, unto Abram was attributed the name Hebrew. So, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Hebraic line which descends from Shem. Okay? And this is the Hebraic line, line has been established. Okay? Verse 11. And houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells digged which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Now stop. Stop. Okay? In the dispensation of the patriarchs, Abraham said unto his servant, Beware that you don't bring my son hither again. Okay? Don't let uh, don't bring for my son uh, a wife of the world of Canaan where he dwelt, but go on to my kindred. Okay, okay, stay within your own kindred of Shem, be of Shem, of Ham, be of Ham, of Japheth, be of Japheth. Very simple, okay, but also, like I said, a deeper instruction in righteousness. What fellowship hath Christ with Belial? Okay, number two of beware. Okay? Do not provoke the Lord to anger. Okay? Obey. Do what he says. And it goes well with you. Oh, okay? Don't mingle yourself with the world. Stay within your kindred. Uh, don't provoke the Lord and do what he says. And things will come to you if you do it his way. Okay? If you are of the church of God, the church of the living God. Okay? But then a beware that comes is, then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Well, I got this because I'm so good or because I've been there, done that. I'm familiar with the Lord, so I'm taking it upon myself. See, beware of self-sufficiency. Beware of self-sufficiency. Verse 13, thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods, plays into what he said unto Abraham, or what Abraham said unto his servant, excuse me. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Verse 16. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him at in Massa. So, okay, we're getting the concept of beware here, all right? And, and also now, Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, 
Matthew chapter 16, verses 6, on to verse 12. Come on. Matthew chapter 16, verses 6, on to verse 12. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees, which was what? Hypocrisy. And you can read about that all in uh, Matthew chapter 23. Okay? And they reason among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Hmm. Do ye not yet remember, not, uh, excuse me, do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it <laughs> that ye do not understand that I spake it not, spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? What is he talking about? Verse 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine. The doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And their doctrines were what? Their traditions of men. And we're, we're going to look at that. My fear, uh, my fear is taught by the precepts of men. Okay? So, the doctrine of the Pharisees was something they concocted. Of the traditions of men. Loosely based on what is actual, but see, that's how tradition, tradition of man starts. It will have a basis on truth, but then it will go so far away from the truth that it becomes a leaven. And a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, see. Okay? All right? Now go to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Just one verse to start. Luke chapter 12. Verse 1, explaining exactly what we just looked at. In the meantime, when they were gathered together, an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Which is hypocrisy. Okay? And verse 15 Another beware. Okay. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth, whether it be an abundance of lands, abundance of clothing, abundance of books, abundance of cash. Abundance of friends, abundance of devoted, loyal followers who will lick the dog dung off of the bottom of your foot if they, if you ask them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Beware of covetousness. And the leaven of the Pharisees, which was hypocrisy, led on to covetousness. Again, read Matthew chapter twenty-three. All the stuff they did were to be seen of men. What were they covetous of? Praises of men. Okay, so we are to beware of these things. And let's go to Acts, Acts chapter 13. Okay, I told you this was, this was a milk. Okay, I told you that. Acts chapter 13, verses 40 and 41. And this is Paul admonishing. Beware, therefore. Lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Beware will come upon you, the curse, being filled with your own devices, to be given over to a reprobate mind 
to do those things that are in, are not convenient. Okay? You reject truth and you go for the wisdom of men, which is philosophy. Okay? And our Lord is absolute. Our Lord is absolute truth. I am the way, the truth, the life. It's either or. There is no middle ground. There is no lukewarm. Anything lukewarm makes our Lord black. Puke. Okay? Are you with me so far? You with me? So uh, when our Lord says something to beware, okay, and you read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, these have not received the love of the truth, therefore God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Okay? You got to be careful. You despise the Lord. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall no wise believe, though man declare it unto you. Now, context, he's talking unto the Jews and whatnot. Yes, he is. And what he is talking about is a reference unto the Jews. But the point is, okay, how many of you lost people have heard the true gospel from the church of the living God and despise it and reject it? You're being filled with your own devices. The Lord has chose your delusions for you because you receive not the love of the truth. Beware. Beware. Okay. And Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Okay. This is, this is how we're going to do this. Okay, we're going to focus on a word, and we are going to uh, attack that word, so to speak. Okay, if this is too much for you, then go away. It's that simple. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. For Repetition is a good thing. Okay? Amen. Beware of dogs who like to eat their own vomit. Okay? Beware of evil workers. No marvel. Because Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And no marvel either that his ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness, evil workers. Okay? Beware of the concision. Look at that verse. You got three. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. What is con the concision has what? Confidence in the flesh. And then he goes on to talk about being circumcised. So concision, beware of the concision, is a reference unto the Jews. Okay? Or Judaizers, those who are uh, legalistic. And no, the word legalistic is not in the scriptures. No, but uh, uh, the traditions of men are. Okay? That's in the scriptures. So beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Okay? Someone of the concision has confidence in the flesh. Okay? Someone who is legalistic. Someone who wants to bring a whole bunch of rules and regulations on you not founded upon scripture, not pertinent for this dispensation. Catholics are like that. A lot of these ites are like that, okay? Okay? But we are told to beware of these people who want these ministers of flesh. that are all about fleshly things. Whether it be the charismatics with their signs and wonders, it's a fleshly thing, okay? Whether it be the Calvinists or some of the King James Bible-believing Christians with their mental stuff, with their scholarly approaches and stuff like that, okay? Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. Because we are those who have no confidence in the flesh. 
The inference is about verse 2 that those who have everything to do about the flesh, they are the dogs and the evil workers. Okay? And granted, yes, Paul was making a reference on the Judaizers, but it is not limited to just that, you anti Semitic people. Okay? You, you really need to be careful with that anti Semitic stuff of yours. Okay? That's Catholic. Okay? You've got to be careful of that. And of course, let's stop at 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 on to verse 18, okay? Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Yeah, because when you're living according to the Spirit, by the dictates of the scripture, you will have that peace no matter what is going on around you. But when you are consumed of fleshly things, that riff in your peace. Why? Because you're focused on the things of the flesh. Okay? And if you already noticed, that is the one thing that we have to beware of. Okay? The very first reference had everything to do with fleshly matters. Second one that we looked at had to do with the Lord, okay? And also, too, in Deuteronomy, remembering the Lord who will give you things that are needful, okay? And account that the long suffering, verse 15, of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, uh, if Paul was a false prophet, as many of these whack jobs like to say, who are non dispensational, uh, why would Peter say beloved brother Paul? Okay. Also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable their ways are always movable that thou canst not know them. <laughs> okay? <laughs> a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, as a wave of the sea tossed to and fro. Okay? Which they are that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. And I have seen that. I have seen that firsthand, unfortunately with a young man I love very, with a couple of young men I've lo I love very dearly. I've seen that happen, okay? They're led by devils. And it leads to their destruction. Such a shame. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness. Steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And if you beware, if you beware these things, brethren, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Yes, beware. Lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked. Again, the Charismatics. Again, the Calvinists and the Catholics. The three C's. Okay? The three C's. Okay? Beware. So, back at verse 8 in Colossians chapter 2. Beware! Lest any man, any man. We learn in, uh, what is it, 1 Corinthians? If any man defile the temple of God, him God will destroy. Any man, meaning yourself, with your bad diet and that garbage that you're putting into yourself. Okay? But, okay, let, 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 let's read that again. Okay? Beware lest any man spoil you. Let's add the spoil you. Okay? 
Beware, lest any man spoil you. We don't need to go over spoil, okay? Rotten, go bad, stink, okay? We know what spoil means, okay? If you want to know what spoil means, you can look in Webster's. I would recommend you look in Scripture first, okay? But we're not going to concentrate on spoil. We're going to look, because also spoil could be like having of goods, but in this content, spoiled, like a spoiled piece of steak that begins to stink and turns brown, okay? We get that, right? Okay? But if, beware lest any man spoil you, any man spoil you. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 6 on the verse 10. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, actual blood kindred, okay, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, even like-minded. Entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. I have encountered this recently. Someone who I thought was as my own soul, like-minded, sure thought like it, Sure, it seemed like it, but we are serving two different gods. I'm serving the God of the scriptures. Another is serving the devil. Yes. Okay. The devil and his ministers of righteousness transforming themselves as angels of light and ministers of righteousness and stuff like that. Okay. Namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Okay? Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him. Those who sin rebuke before all. I'm not going to name anyone's name. I, I don't like to do that unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, but yes, <laughs> we have this admonition here. You cannot get away from it. Okay? You can. Thou shalt not, neither shalt thou conceal him. And very quickly, I'm going to confess to you a fault. I was aware in certain people, some things that were quite heretical. And I, hey, Lord, you deal with them. You show them the truth. And for a while with some of them, it's like, okay, you haven't mentioned it. So, hey, maybe, maybe the Lord showed you the truth about what you actually believe on that nonsense. But then it comes out, it's like, not only are you, have you not repented on that, you are ca causing what you believe is true as a source of conflict brought about by a coadjutor, A, um, to be a source of division. And all the while being aware but saying nothing. Shame on me. I repent of that. And that's never going to happen again. And if you are in close fellowship with me personally and something like that arises, you're going to know about it. I'm going to let you know about it. Okay? So, just had to bring that up. Let's continue. But thou shalt surely kill him. Now, we, vengeance is the Lord's. This is a different dispensation under the law, okay? We have to make that distinction. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, okay? Okay? 
But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. Uh, our brother Alexander Hartley did a wonderful video about the sin of one. Uh, I will link that in the description box for you to very, very mwah, wonderful video. <laughs> Man who is truly has Asperger's. And, in, and is in no wise a narcissist. Let's continue. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So see, when someone is listening to things other than the Lord, the gods of the people, okay? It defiles you. It, it defiles you. And they are seeking to draw you away from the truth. Even, even if their intentions are good. Uh, remember, the way to hell is paved with good intentions, people. Okay? Very serious. Very serious. If my best friend if my wife were to be going into the charismatic realm, be like, hey, hey, my love, hey, brother, let's come on, let's, let's sit down, let's talk, okay? Let's, let's go through the scriptures together. It's funny, a lot of people don't want to do that, do they? They're just, they just want to go off and make their videos or do whatever, um, but they don't want to talk about it together uh, in the scriptures. They don't want to go that route for some reason. Hmm. Hmm. I think a lot of it has to do with because they're afraid of what they'll find out within the scriptures. Then again, when a tie has been permanently severed and you are left no other concourse but to do it publicly, that's different. That's different. When there is no more chance of communication, then you are left with no other... Well, then, okay, then I have no choice. You know, but there are some people who I was not able to communicate with personally, which I had no choice, but to, like, okay. And so others of the Church of the Living God could learn as well. But it's like, okay, I can't talk to you personally. I have no choice but to do this, Okay. Okay? And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this among you. Okay? And what are we reading to? We are reading to verse... We were supposed to read to only to verse 10, but we read on to verse 11. Okay? <laughs> okay? But now, go to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Okay, Luke chapter 9. We are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. Hear, O Israel. That's in Deuteronomy chapter 6, I believe that is. And a dear brother of mine will correct me if I'm wrong and probably put it. Thank you, brother. I love that you're doing that. I love that you're doing that. All of you who do that, I love that. Thank you. Keep doing that. Okay, but uh, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verses 23 and on to verse 25. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world lose himself or be cast away. Go to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14 verses 20 no, no, find your place Brad. Verses 26 on to verse 27. If any man come to me and hate not his father. Now He's not saying that you're supposed to hate your father or anything like that. No. What he's talking about is you putting them over him. How many people 
are putting their relatives over God? How many people are putting their family ties over the Lord and their relationship with the Lord? If my own wife were to go dingbat heretical, crazy, and try to lead me away from the faith, uh-uh, uh-uh. If my best friend, who is as my own soul, were to do the same, or I unto him, okay? That's how that works. Christ first, in the beginning, God. But how many? Well, I, I want the Lord, but I, I want to be with my family. I want the Lord, but I want what the world offers me. I want, uh... See, if you are of a, truly of a like mind with a fellow brother or sister whose God is the Lord and the scripture is your authority, the fellowship will be there. But if it isn't there and you're worshiping other gods, okay? Uh, verse 26 and 27 here in Luke chapter 14. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Christ first. Christ above all things. Above your own life. Above the life of your spouse, your father, your mother. Okay? you got to remember that. You have to live that no matter how painful it is. We've lost quite a few people in our uh, since we've been doing this. And that's okay. It happens. But see, if you're not like-minded, if you're not serving the same Lord, the Lord's going to weed those people out of your life. Okay? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Absolutely. And uh, let me see. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. I have something in parentheses that is an option to mention, so I'm not. I'm opting not to mention it. Not really pertinent. Uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. Again, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Oh, Satan can come along and tempt you with a whole lot of stuff, couldn't he? You go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 on to verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 on to verse 19. Not Romans, Brad. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 on to verse 19. Remember what I said? If any man, if any man, defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. That means your diet, but that also means what are you putting in through the gates of your ears, your eyes, your senses, okay? It's not just edibles, okay? You can defile the temple of God by some of the nonsense that you believe, okay? Let no man deceive himself. If any among you seem it to be wise in this world, look at that context. Wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. So see, actually the inference here in about, in verse 17, yes, be careful of what you eat. Okay, you eat poison stuff, you're defiling the temple and God's going to allow it to destroy you. Absolutely, you're going to be destroyed. But also this inference, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world... Let him become a fool in the eyes of the world that he may be wise. It's okay to have a little. It won't hurt you. <laughs> We've always done it. I know Mr. Ruckman did that. and We're, we're going to look at that scripturally. I know Mr. Ruckman did that thing about the rudiments of the world. Okay, I, I know. I know that was one of the good things that Mr. Ruckman did. Okay, but we're going to look at that in scripture. Okay. But see, it's, it's a little bit more deeper for verse 17 than just what you put in your mouth. It's what's going into you. Okay? 
Because remember, what does our Lord say? Anything that you eat, it goes out into the belly and gets cast out into the draught, purging all meats. Okay? Remember? But it's the things that come out of the heart that defile the man. Okay? So, yes, and especially within this dispensation, the dietary restrictions have been removed. Okay? So yes, there is the toxicity of genetically modified organisms, which is probably, uh, it's over the entire world, but a lot here in America, it's a little bit deeper than just that, okay? Verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their craftiness. And let's read verse 20. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Now wise... What is the wise in this context? Those who are of the world. Okay? And, okay? Okay? And now, Colossians 2, verse 8. Beware! Take very, very frightful heed. Lest any man, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your best friend, Friend, your wife, your son, your daughter. Beware. Now, granted, different dispensation. Vengeance is the Lord's. We don't kill people like they did in the Old Testament like that. No, there were specific purposes. Vengeance is of the Lord. We don't do that. But if someone that close to you is trying to get you into heresy or to lead you astray, you need to take drastic action and you need to be either or. You need to be either hot or cold. Because if you try to be lukewarm, the Lord's you're making the Lord sick. Okay? You get it? Beware lest any man spoil you. Spoil you by going after other gods. Spoil you like a rotten piece of meat that stinketh. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Ooh. Have you ever read philosophy before? Google search. What is a person? You will get Nietzsche, Kant, Hegel, and so many other philosophies. And what is a person to scripture? That your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's in First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, I believe that is. Okay, brother, go ahead. Thank you for doing that too, by the way, dear brother. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Okay? But philosophy. You know, I've read Hegel before. I understood what he was saying, but all philosophy is is man's wisdom to try to explain away God and to deify flesh. That's all philosophy really is. But let's look in Scripture. Go to Romans, of course. Romans chapter 1. We, we've been over this before. But, <laughs> brethren, oh, you know what time it is. Romans chapter 1. Verses 20 under verse 25. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Okay? Godhead. God the Father. Okay? God the Father who is the soul of Godhead. Okay? But the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. Okay? Okay? These three are one. You and I, we are made in God's image. We have a spirit, soul, and body. Hence, like I've told you before, you look at yourself in the mirror, even though you might be as ugly as I am and the mirror might crack, okay? You looking at your own ugly mug in the mirror gives you evidence of God because you have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body, okay? The soul did not evolve. Okay. Yes, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Okay? 
Because of that, when they knew God, just here, they glorified him not as God. So if it was in their heart, that glorification would come, okay? And there are some out there who are lost who glorify God, but yet they don't have a relationship with him. Okay, you got to remember that too, okay? Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Hagel gave a whole bunch of stuff about God, but when you read Hagel, if you read Hagel, it's all about the deification of man and of, of man. It's the deification of man. It's man's wisdom. That's what philosophy is. It's technical, very high-sounding, wordy, uh, the wisdom of words of men. Yea, hath God said. That's what philosophy is. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image make like to corruptible man. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? And to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Because remember, we are to beware, not mingling with those of the world for our instruction and righteousness that we, that's what we take away from Genesis 24, verses 1 on to verse 6. The literal application was because the Hebraic line was being established, okay? Remember that. Don't forget that. That was a very important thing that a certain individual left out, which he should have mentioned, okay? But, but, okay? But. You get messed up with philosophy. And I've seen this. God will what? Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. There is a homeless guy who is devil possessed filled with devils he's probably got legion in him who looking into his past life was all about greek myths and greek mythology and all this stuff and you mess around with that stuff i i have stuff uh, similar to that but see it's there for reference to de uh, debunk it and to refute it but when you start giving your life and time to it and start buying that nonsense you open up uh, portals for devils. You open up windows and doors for devils. And I've seen it. Guys who had a comfortable life. Lost. But they got involved in all that occultic garbage. And now they're homeless people. Talking about chainsaws and dandelions and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Crazy. And also, 1 Corinthians. We, of course, we have. you can't. When talking about philosophy, you cannot not mention 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First, uh, don't lose your place, Brad. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 19, on to verse 21. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the wise in context, wise in this world, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Oh, all the, what, the Hawkins, the Dawkins, that Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> okay? And that Jordan Peterson and that uh, Brand guy. And don't, don't tell me, try to tell me for one second that that Jordan Peterson is of the Church of the Living God. If anything, he's a Christian. He's not of the Church of the Living God. There's no way. I don't buy it for one second. Okay. Hath not hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. And you read any of Hagel or Nietzsche or Kant? Oh wow! Uh, Manly Palmer Hall. Wow. <laughs> yeah. They, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But especially with Manly Palmer Hall, he, he didn't say that there was no God, but he wasn't serving the true God. He was serving Satan. 
because he was a professed Luciferian, just like Catholics are, you know? I, little, a little, uh, little rabbit trail here, okay? Season with teriyaki. If you've ever actually listened to that imbecile Anton LaVey, you ever listened to him? You just like sat and listened and watched or what he had to say? The guy was an idiot. The guy was an idiot. <laughs> Guys like Anton LaVey are distractions from what true Luciferianism, Satanism is. Okay? Satan is using guys like Anton LaVey and those twits. Yes, he is. As a distraction, true Satanism, true Luciferianism is the tradition of men. Uh, that's Roman Catholicism. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. When I used to listen to that disgusting death metal, there was a band called Deicide. Glenn Benton, who called himself a death... If if you are truly a Luciferian, you'd be a Catholic and not messed up with these. I mean, I don't recommend you do, but if you listen to Anton LaVey or that other guy of the Church of Saints, these guys are idiots. They're stupid. <laughs> it's like, no, no, that is not what... Roman Catholicism. That's true Satanism. That is Luciferianism. Anton LaVey and all them guys, that's a distraction for you to think that's what true Satanism is. No, true Luciferianism is ye shall be as gods. It's masonry. It's Roman Catholicism. It's charismatics. It's Calvinism! Okay? All right? It's Jehovah's Witnesses. It's Mormonism. It's Islam. Okay? Okay, all right, deification of flesh, of man, all right, but anyway, let's continue. For after the wisdom, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And we got to add verse 22 here, okay? For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay? I know I said on to 19. Uh, I know I said on to, uh, what was it, on to verse 21. But we read verse 22 again, so. But now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 14. Uh, no, 11 on to verse 14 in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. For what man knoweth the things of a man? save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. The spirit of man that is in you is, uh, is actually the spirit of this world. Okay? Because the spirit of God is not in you. Capital S. God breathed into your life. You have life. You have light in your eyes. Yes. Okay? But God does not live within you. Okay? Big difference. So the spirit that is in you, unregenerate, lost, Coadjutor is the spirit of this world, that spirit of Antichrist, okay? Because remember, man is cursed, okay? From the ground, from the dust we came, under the dust we shall return, remember? Let's continue. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Note that the lowercase s, spirit which is of God, meaning in that context of what God is imparting himself, Okay? that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, meaning himself. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The spirit that is within you, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit with spiritual things, the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? But the natural man who is diluted, spoiled, stinketh through philosophy, vain deceit. We're getting ahead of ourselves. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, capital S there, of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, 
Why? Because they are spiritually discerned, because they're not doing uh, comparing spiritual things, spiritual things, the Lord within you, with spiritual things. The scriptures, see. This is philosophy. This is vain deceit. And, of course, James chapter 3. Really, really good. Really good. Okay? Really good about philosophy. Philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. Philosophy. <laughs> James chapter 3, verses 14 and 16. And this is also the result of philosophy, I must add. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts... Glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom, the wisdom of man, descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying, for what, am I reading the right thing too? Yes, under verse 16. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. And we are already looked at about beware of evil workers. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Those who are all about the flesh. The charismatics with all their signs and their wonders. And how devils appear to them. Hmm? To the Calvinists. Well, we're elect and you're not elect. you got to give up X, Y, and Z. Then God will, or the pathetic, God loves every. Beware. Beware involves fear. Lest any man, whether it be mother or father, wife, son, daughter, children, whatever, spoil you, stinketh like rotten meat, through philosophy, wisdom of men, the wisdom of this world, and vain deceit. Vain. Vain. Jeremiah chapter 10. Oh, I, that's right. I can't use this because it can only be applied onto one aspect. Uh, uh, foolish. Absolute fool. Absolute fool. Jeremiah chapter 10. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 10. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Hear the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. And then try to put your little Christianity stamp on it. You, ugh. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people, the customs of the people who are heathen, instruction and righteousness, um, those who are not of the church of God, which is the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of truth, ground and pillar of truth. For the customs of the people are vain, vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanity. All is vanity and vexation of spirit outside of God. Okay? For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. The customs. And setting about to do something fleshly. But then again, we can't use that because it's only supposed to be used for one thing. No instruction and in righteousness there, of course. Uh, that was the death knell on many a thing, if, uh, if I must say so myself. And of course, vain, useless, hopeless, empty, no good, vain, vanity. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 14 on to verse 17. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies, hence making them vain, empty, useless, worthless. Okay? 
They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. And you see a lot of Christians doing that. It's okay to be Catholic for a day. It's okay to, you know, hey, God can appear to you if you're special. Hey, you might be have the privilege to go to heaven or to hell and then come back and write a book about it and have a YouTube channel that has over 10 million views in under not even six months. Okay, sure, okay? <clears throat> They are all, uh, uh, they are, they are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets: Behold, I will feed them with wormwood, and make them drink the water of gall. For the prophets of Jerusalem, for from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. And where are we reading on to? Verse 17. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision out of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Out of their own heart. And those who trust in their own heart are fools fool has in his heart. There is no God. Okay? <clears throat> they say still unto me, uh, they say still unto them that despise me. The Lord has said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Making you vain. Saying peace, peace, where there is no peace. Okay? <laughs> and of course, let's go to Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. Have to. Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. Why Exodus chapter 5? If I'm not mistaken, Exodus chapter 5 is the first singular appearance of vain. Not vanity or anything like that. Exodus chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 9. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert. And sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works get you unto your burdens? And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more Give the people straw to make brick as he heard heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tail of the bricks which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught from the, aught thereof. For they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let their more work be laid upon them, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. Look at the context, and that's the first singular appearance of the word vain in Scripture. Look at the context. Who is calling what vain? Pharaoh. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, whatever. In type, especially this one, of Satan. Yea, hath God said, so Pharaoh, who in type for us in instruction and righteousness is a type of Satan, and Egypt for instruction and righteousness for us is a type of the world, you have Pharaoh calling the words of God vain. Yea, hath God said? That's what philosophy. Uh, Yea, hath God said? Okay? 
Yeah, and that's something. And that's something. Beware, back to Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. We don't need to really work too hard on deceit because we know what deceit is. A lie. Okay? But go to Job chapter 13. Job chapter 13. We know what deceit is. We do. Many of you know it more so than others <laughs> because you live in it. But let's say it the scripture. Job chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 10. I, I told you this wasn't going to be milk. Okay? Job chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 10. Lo, mine eye has seen it. Lo, uh, is this, uh, I, I, I forget. This is Job talking, yes. <laughs> Lo, mine eye has seen all this. Mine ear hath heard and understood it. What ye know, the same do I know also. I am not inferior unto you. Surely I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to reason with God. But ye are forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. Doctors. Philosophers can also be called doctors, isn't that? And they're physician of, physicians of no value. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, that ye would all together hold your peace. Shut up. And then it should be your wisdom. Hear now my reasoning. And hearken to the pleadings of my lips. Will ye speak wickedly for God and talk deceitfully for him? Hmm? Will he, will ye accept his person? Will ye contend for God? Is it good that he should search you out? Or as one man mocketh another, do ye so mock him? He will surely reprove you if ye do secretly accept persons. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Any man? Philosophy, the wisdom of men, all centered on flesh. Okay? Okay? Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Psalm 36, verses 1 on to verse 4. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. Unto these types of people, evil is good, and good is evil. Okay? And now a couple of one-verse references here. Go to um, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, just one verse. Because, like I said, we, we all know what deceit is. But, but John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil. Where deceit comes from. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, from his own self. He would remember, Satan was captivated with his own beauty, his own brightness. Okay? <laughs> For he is a liar and the father of it. And the father of it. Absolutely. And uh, while we're here, go to 2 Timothy Chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. But evil men and seducers, yes, whose ways are always movable, that thou canst not know them, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. These are the worst, deceiving and being deceived thinking that they're actually serving the true God when they're serving Satan. 
There's no hope for some of these people like that. They're deceiving while being deceived. Perfect example, some of these charismatic nut jobs who think that the Lord appears to them or audibly talks to them. Yeah, deceiving and being deceived. That's a Proverbs chapter 26, verse 12, unfortunately, for a lot. And of course, 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, verse 21. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. And no lie is of the truth. Simple enough. Simple enough. Like I said, we all know what deceit is. Okay? You look here on YouTube or on other platforms, yeah. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Wisdom of men and vain, useless, deceit, lies after the tradition of men. Tradition of men. Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. We're not going to really um, get down on this because we all know what this is talking about. Even you lost coadjutors know this because <laughs> you work for the Vatican. But uh, Isaiah 29 verses 13 and 14. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as his people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Okay? And now go to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 13. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, talking about the scribes and Pharisees, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from, from me. We just looked at that. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men. As the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Oh, yeah. You reject the commandment of God, so that you may keep your own tradition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whosoever curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man say, shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free, and ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered. And many such like things do ye. Yes, the traditions of men, Catholicism, and all their holidays and all their ordinances, okay? Traditions of men. Okay? We, we know what traditions of men are. Okay? We know. Okay? We know. Colossians 2, verse 8 again. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. Now, this also appears in verses 18 on to verse 23. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly push, puffed up by his fleshly mind. Carnal mind, okay? Okay, which we've been talking about. 
and holding not the and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not. You know, abstain from meats and stuff like that. Yeah. Which all are to per perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. <laughs> which things have indeed a, which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in honor and not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Okay. All right. Rudiments of the world. What are the rudiments of the world? Here's a good place to start. Go to Proverbs. After the rudiments of the world. Proverbs chapter 1. Like I said, Mr. Ruckman did that thing about the rudiments of the world. Which was good. But let's deal with scripture. Rudiments of the world. A. Proverbs 1 verses 10. On to verse 14. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, lay, let us lay a wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Hey, come on, everybody else is doing this. And you, come on, come on. Let's, they, they, no one's going to mind if we go after these weak people. It's okay. Hey, we got to do a little, get a little, right? Okay? Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. We all got to make a living. Let's read now on to verse 16. My son... Walk not down the way with them. Beware! Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refra refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil. Make haste to shed blood. Hmm. Okay. B. Of course, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. What verses? I'm not even going to tell you. You're going to know right away. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Don't go with the multitude to any sin. Okay? Holy, set apart, different. Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God saves you. He lives within you. He doesn't want you to be, he doesn't want you to bring Isaac that way again. Okay? Okay? And be not conformed to this world. Hey, you got to make a living somehow. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Rudiments of the world, huh? Okay. And 1 John, of course, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, <laughs> verses 15 on to verse 17. Now, you know what we're going to read up to verse 20. We already uh, read verse 21. Love not the world, Neither the, uh, John, 1 John chapter 2, 15 under 20. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The rudiments of the world. Being loving the things of the world. Things that Satan can offer you. Okay? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And the lust of the flesh, 
the religious lust of the flesh so pious and righteous yeah little children it is the last time and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time and oh yeah oh yeah there's so many Christians out there right now yeah yeah, Christianity as it is today is a judgment upon this world, I believe. I truly believe that. They went out from us. But they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction, the Holy Ghost, from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Why? Because if you are of the church of the living God, say born again, converted a new creature in Christ, you have the authorized version of the scriptures, your standard, okay? And, of course, Satan says in Luke chapter 4, all this will I give you if you fall down and worship me. All will be thine because this is given unto me and to whomsoever I will, I give it. That's what Satan says. And the Lord never even corrects him for it because Satan is the little g-god of this world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 5. The scriptures are explaining themselves about what these rudiments of the world are. Okay? We needn't go any farther than we have with Proverbs chapter 1, but we like to be thorough around here. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. <laughs> He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of this world, of the world. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? You can't be satisfied with just the little morsel, the little portion that you have. You want more and more and more. Hence, covetousness. And we already looked at, beware of covetousness. Okay? All right? And, of course, money. Money, which is a rudiment of this world. Yes, it is. Because you're going to be able to buy without money and without price within the kingdom of heaven well, in eternity. Okay? Yeah. Uh, where, where are we going now? Oh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Yes, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, <laughs> which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Yeah. And of course, E, where A, B, C, D, E. Jeremiah chapter... 44. This, this is an interesting aspect here. This is the interesting aspect. Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 15 on to verse 19. This is after they were admonished not to go into Egypt. Okay? This is after they were had the snot whooped out of them by Nebuchadnezzar. Jeremiah chapter 14. Uh, 44, verses 15 on to verse 19. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros answered Jeremiah, saying, So who were really in control there, the men or the women? Hmm? And because thou hast hearkened unto thy wife, 
cursed this ground for thy sake. Man, woman, child. God, excuse me, God, man, woman, child. Not God, woman, child, pet, man. Okay, that's feminist. Okay. As for the word of the, as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. Go after other gods, because ye are gods, knowing good and evil, a rudiment of the world. Ye are gods. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. To burn incense unto Mary, the Queen of Heaven. That's Queen of Heaven, it says right there. That's the Roman Catholic Mary. Okay? And to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals, and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and poured out, uh, out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her, and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? See, man has the penchant to worship, okay? Not the penchant for idolatry, but a penchant to worship. We were created to worship the Lord, to have fellowship with the Lord. A rudiment of the world is that you are your own God and you can do whatever you want to do. You have that liberty to do so, even as the church of the living God. But see, it comes at a price. It comes at a price. Got to be careful. The, the rudiments of the world, just a few of them. We could have made that list extraordinarily large, but we did not, okay? Colossians 2, verse 8. So, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Beware, take heed, be afraid. Lest any man, mother, father, son, daughter, wife, best friend, spoil you rotten, stinking, through philosophy, the wisdom of man, the wisdom of this world, through vain, empty, deceit, lies, after the tradition of men, Catholicism, after the rudiments of this world, let's all do it because everyone else is doing it, and not after Christ. After. After Christ, what Christ are you going after? John chapter 13, after Christ. John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Verses, oh, Verses 12 on to verse 17. This is when Jesus washed the feet. The stinking, rotten, nasty, dirty feet of the disciples, the apostles. God, Father, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Washing men's rotten, nasty, stinking feet. Some of you think you're humble, huh? Yeah. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. 
So Christ as a servant, God washing the feet of the disciples. That's an example. And that, by the way, that example the, is not negated within this dispensation. Okay? Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Okay? Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 unto verse 30. Our Lord says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Learn of me. Learn of me. How do you learn of Christ? Through your experience, through your feelings, through something appearing to you, hearing, through dogmas and stuff like that? No. How do you learn of Christ? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? All right. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Beg your pardon one second, brethren. Mark chapter 9, verses 33 on to verse 37. And he, came to and he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, he asked them, What was it that ye disputed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace. For by the way, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. Who's got the greatest? Who's the greatest minister? Who's the greatest preacher? Who's the greatest of this? I give the, I feel like Christ because I've done. And he sat down and called the twelve and saith unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive me receiveth not me, but him that sent me. We are to receive Christ as a child. That doesn't mean goo-goo, like doing duty in your diapers. No, that means dependent. Okay? We have to get away from self-dependence onto Christ-dependence. See? That's what he talks about. Because a child is holding on to his father's hand for every step. As we as the church of the living God, we are to be Christ dependent. See? Okay? Okay? And go to Luke now 22. Luke 22. I'm not, we're not there. Where are you going, Brad? Luke 22, verses 24 on to 30. Luke 22, the verses 24 on to 30. Right? 24 on to verse 30. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. Oops. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. Pope them! <laughs> yeah. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he doth, doth that as he that doth serve. Remember our Lord washed the stinking nasty feet of fishermen. Okay? For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat? But I am among you as he that serveth. But I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. Isn't that interesting? After Christ, humility, serving others, putting Christ first. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 16.
For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, as we addressed in the previous video, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. Yea, and the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. Uh... We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscurring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the very first verse, we read this. Paul says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Paul was the example within this dispensation. Paul was the apostle unto the Gentiles, okay? It's not that he had a gospel specifically for the Gentiles, but he was the one brought, uh, given on to the Gentiles to bring the gospel onto the Gentiles. But Paul's example of living within this dispensation was to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? You have to remember that. Paul is our apostle of us Gentiles, okay? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But it's not that there was one gospel to the Gentile and another to the Jew. No, 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 no. His example of being a follower of Jesus is the example that to the Jew first and also to the Gentile that we in this dispensation are to live by. He is our example to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. What about Peter? Amen. He was the apostle on to the circumcision, the Jews, okay? Okay, but the gospel for this dispensation specifically, after the rejection of the uh, gospel by the Jew, okay, incorporating it was this dispensation, but it was revealed unto Paul. Okay, okay, got to remember that. Okay, Paul is the example to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay, and for this. Go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 8. Okay? So, be ye followers of me as I am of Christ. Okay? We are to follow Paul as Paul followed Christ. And what was that like? Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 on verse 8. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, okay? But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Self-sacrifice. Charity, being charitable, okay? Okay? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? And was made like, was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So we are to be told not to be conformed to this world, but be re transformed by the renewing of our mind. Okay? And we are told to do nothing through strife or vainglory. You know, mine's bigger than yours and one up you. Yeah. Okay? And we are to be concerned with others, okay? For them going to heaven, helping others, absolutely. Not through vain glory, your glory, glory, a woe to the man whose glory, whose flesh is his arm, okay? Who glory in men, okay? 
And being found, verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, humbled, being humble, being described, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So obedience, okay? Yeah, yes, you can be of the church of the living God and not do one thing the scriptures say. Yes, you can. And you would even go to heaven if you are truly saved. Your testimony would be, your life would be, your witness would be, and you, through what you do, through your lack of obedience to the scriptures, would bring shame and reproach upon the one who died for you. Okay? Okay? Keep that in mind. Okay? But this obedience brought forth what? A steadfastness. Look at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Being steadfast, first being humble, okay? And first being humble, being obedient will also bring forth what? Steadfastness. Luke chapter 9. Very good example of this. If I can get there. Luke chapter 9, verses 51 on to verse 53. 51 on to verse 53. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, our Lord Jesus, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. My heart is fixed, O oh God. My heart is fixed. Steadfast. Determined to do what the Lord has said for you to do. He was determined to do what he was here to do. To die on the cross. To bury and raise again the third day according to the scripture. To shed his blood to make an atonement for sin. His face was steadfast. Not divertible. Being unmovable. Okay? And being humble and being obedient. Steadfastness. Okay? And sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him. Why? Because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. In other words, he didn't pay any mind to this. He had... He had his eyes on prize. And see, when we have our eyes on the Lord, he will make us to take notice of the things around us as being a servant unto all. But see, humility, obedience, and steadfastness. Okay? And go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Okay? Hebrews chapter 12. After Christ. Okay? This is what Christ as the Lamb was. Okay? Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. This is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, where you have to endure to the end. Destruction and righteousness. But look at this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Do you realize our faith will be finished when, for us today in this dispensation, when we are redeemed, caught up, come up hither? Okay? Why? Come up hither. We're going to be with the Lord. We're going to be seeing the Lord then. We don't need faith anymore. Okay? But looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So in humility, obedience, and steadfastness, despising the shame. Also, you read about how Moses would rather suffer uh, affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, the things of the world. Okay. 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 Uh, First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two verses nineteen onto twenty-five. First Peter chapter two verses nineteen onto verse twenty-five. For this is thankworthy, 
if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if, when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? Yeah. But if, when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Okay? Who did no sin? Neither was guile found in his mouth. Who did no sin? God can't sin. Never could sin. The flesh... Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The word was made flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, okay? God within that flesh could not sin. But the flesh, oh, that could have. God within that, no, okay? Okay, I know that's really hard for a lot of you to get. Why, I don't know, but okay? Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Uh, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And then see, someone will come to this, these these pacifists and then they'll go to the sermon on the mount about turn your cheek and turn your cheek you know you gotta remember the sermon on the mount is written about the kingdom of heaven that's how it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven during the kingdom of heaven jesus christ is going to be on the earth physically then you have to worry about blasphemy of the holy ghost when jesus christ is here physically on the earth but see when jesus christ is physically on the earth you turn the other cheek to the your enemy why because that enemy is going to have to deal with the lord personally okay you got to remember that but see these pacifists will say, well, then we're not supposed to fight back. No escalation of force or no nonsense like that. Uh, no. See, Jesus was very confronting. One thing you lack, okay? Jesus was very confronting. And Jesus also had righteous anger, okay? See, pacifism teaches no fighting back whatsoever but see we as the church of the living god we are to fight against false doctrine against heresy yes we are but we're not to be brawlers okay there's a difference things that are different are not the same so a pacifist will come to this and say oh you're just supposed to lay there and be a dorm no 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 you look at the life of Jesus. He confronted the Pharisees. He confronted the Sadducees. He was very confronting. He put his finger on that thing that you lack every single time. But Jesus was also angry. Okay? Anger, righteous indignation. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Okay? Now, if you do not have the scriptures, if you don't have the scriptures, say you have the Legacy Standard Bible, John MacArthur's translation, or the New American Standard, or the NIV or the ESV, okay? There's something missing in your Bible that is written in the scriptures. See, your Bible makes Jesus a sinner because Jesus got angry. He had righteous indignation. You can be angry and sin not. You can have righteous indignation. Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 under verse 22. And the reason why he is saying this, again, because this is how it's going to be during the kingdom of heaven. When the people are going to have to deal directly with the Lord himself. Okay? Yes, we're, go we're all going to give an account of ourselves to God. Yes, we are. Even you lost people. But during the kingdom of heaven, when he's right there in Jerusalem, it's a different dynamic. Okay? So he's saying this. Because in presence, he will be there. That's why he is saying, ye have heard that, uh, verses 21 and 22, okay? Ye have heard that it was said by them of all time, thou shalt not kill, and whoso shall, and whosoever shall 
kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause. Your Legacy Standard Bible, okay? Your NIV, your ESV, your New American Standard, your Holman Christian Standard, your CSB, your Netwit Living in the Trash, okay? Doesn't have without a cause. It doesn't have that in there. It's missing. So, in the Bible, it says, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment. It's without a cause. So see, you're reading MacArthur's translation. It's calling Jesus a sinner. Yes. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Reka or Racha, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Why is he saying that? Context. This is the Sermon on the Mount. This is how it's going to be during the kingdom of heaven. Instruction and righteousness for us. Yes, but doctrinally, but no doctrine pertinent to the dispensation at hand, how you are right with God, saved with God, that kind of stuff. Laws, statutes, commandments for the dispensation, instruction and righteousness, how you live therefore. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, and see, without a cause, be ye angry and sin not. Okay, you can be angry. We are to have righteous indignation. Go to Mark chapter 3. Go to Mark chapter 3. Okay, Jesus was angry. And see, if you don't have the scriptures, but you have one of those disgusting Bibles, your little Bible there, Mr. Yehath God said, Jesuit critic, your, your Bible calls Jesus a sinner. Mark chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 6. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand, and they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth! And he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he looked round about on them with anger, oh, Jesus was angry. So, okay, see, you guys who write, read Bibles and not the scriptures, uh, where without a cause is not in there, uh, Jesus is angry right there. By your Bible, the Living Standard, well, Living Standard Bible, NASB, whatever perversion, whatever Roman Catholic perversion you have, your your scriptures. Excuse me. Excuse me. Your Bible. Excuse me. It's calling Jesus a sinner. He was angry. That hurt, but I deserved that. Okay? And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, righteous indignation. Okay? He saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. And a really good one. John chapter 2, John chapter 2, verses 13 on to verse 17. Here's a really good one, okay? Verses 13 on to verse 17 in John chapter 2. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the changers of money sitting, anger, righteous indignation, and when he had made a scourge of small cords, basically a whip, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. Many, I've, the argument has been brought up, well, he wasn't angry when he was doing this. Really? Really? Yea, hath God said? Yeah, in your oldest and best manuscript, yea, hath God said, right? Yeah. 
and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house had eaten me up. See, he was zealous, not angry. See, Brad, things are, yes, but in his, zeal, in his zeal, he was angry because they had made the temple a place of merchandise. Nice try, you Jesuit critics. See, Jesus was angry, okay? He was confronting. He fought back the religious system. Pacifism is satanic. Beware. Beware of that. Beware. Okay, what are we, what are we dissecting? <laughs> Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. After Christ. First Samuel chapter 13. First Samuel chapter 13. 1 Samuel chapter 13. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 11 on to verse 14. And Samuel said, this was when, um, uh, what was this? This is uh, talking about Saul and uh, when um, he fell out of favor with the Lord and stuff like that. This is before the bleating of the uh, the things, but but check this out. And Samuel said, "What hast thou done?" And Saul said, "Because I saw he offered an offering when he wasn't supposed to. Because I saw that the people were scattered from me." Okay, look at what look at what Saul's doing. Okay, this is the Adamic nature in fallen man that you and I, as the Church of the Living God, struggle with today. Okay? And Saul said, because the people were scattered from me. So first he says to people. Uh, and that thou camest not within the days appointed. Then he's like, okay. Then he points to Samuel. And that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. And then he blames the Philistines. Therefore, said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. Now, to stop right there, uh, we, this is not within the notes, but we have to. We have to talking about people who make excuses and like to, okay, wh where does this come from? Genesis chapter 3, okay? When they open, when they ate of the tree that they weren't supposed to, their eyes were open, they knew what sin was. And here Adam says in Genesis chapter 3, um, verse 12, And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Adam's like, okay, it's the woman's fault who you gave me. Yeah, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Okay, that's a half-hearted half uh, taking responsibility for one's action, blaming others. He ultimately blamed God. Because it's the woman first, but it's your fault because you gave her to me. And see, I sin calling God a sinner, basically. And here back in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 11 and 12 again. Okay. <laughs> and Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw the people were scattered from me. And that thou camest not within the days appointed. The woman. But you gave me the woman. Huh? See? See this? Okay? And that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. So see, it's my surrounding. It's, it's, that's the, at fault. Therefore, said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. 
Yeah, I said, but I had no choice because it's this fault, this fault. The, it's your, uh, it's, uh, it's the, their, uh, what did he say? It's the people's fault. It's Samuel's fault. It's the Philistines. So it's the woman, it's God, and it's your surroundings, right? Kind of like we saw in the book of Genesis. And also the Philistines, you know, the surroundings. <laughs> they have God said. Verse 13, and Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. A man after his own heart. A lot of people mistakenly think that David had the heart of God. Oh, no. Uh, an adulterer and a murderer. Okay, no. He sought after. He went after God's own heart. Okay. He went after. He sought it. Okay, and that's what we are to do. Okay, we are to seek after God in all things, to be a man after God's own heart. Okay, David did not have the heart of God, he sought after God's heart. Big difference, big, and that's what it is to be after, to be after Christ. Okay, that's what it is, dear friend. To be after Christ. Uh, go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verses 3 on to verse 5. If any man teach otherwise. And consent not to wholesome words. Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Doctrine which is according to godliness. Okay. Godliness being other than that, separate, okay? He is proud, knowing nothing but doting about, Christ, uh, doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds. Because they have professed themselves to be wise, they become fools. Suppose uh, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Yeah, and Jude, Jude, three on the verse eight, beloved. Uh, before we read Jude, uh, verses 3 on to verse 8. Second, uh, second, Colossians 2, verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Jude, verses 3 on to verse 8. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you as the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered, thank you, unto the saints. Common salvation, meaning there is one way to be saved, okay? God is not a respecter of persons. You're saying that God appeared to you um, that makes God a respecter of persons because he appeared to you. You're lying. You're deceived. Okay? Okay? God is not a respecter of persons. Common salvation. Available to all. One way. To all people. Okay? And when you say that God has appeared to you, God, well, you've made God a respecter of persons because he appeared to you. You're lying and deceived and being deceived. Deceiving and being deceived. Okay? 
For there are certain men crept in unawares, spoiling through philosophy and vain deceit, through the tradition of men and stuff like that, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, <coughs> despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities, <coughs> defile the flesh. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, af not and not after Christ. Spoiled, rotten, stankin'. <coughs> John chapter 15. We're almost done. John chapter 15. Verses 18 on to verse 25. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And hold your place right there. Go to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Verses 4 and on to verse 6. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Who, who are them? Them of the world. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. These people whose Christian ministry is all about attacking people and exposing this and exposing that and cannot, because they are inept and not saved, cannot teach, but all they do is talk about the past and expose others. Yeah, they speak of worldly things. Therefore the world hears them. Okay? They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Back to John chapter 15, verse 20, on to verse 25 now. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, if they have persecuted me they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had no clo they had no they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. See, right there he's saying in verse 22, very G uh, Jesus Christ was very confrontational. He was. All you people with your um, pacifistic nonsense, Jesus was very confrontational. Okay, He's even making a reference to it right there. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If, ye had not done, if I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. This cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. And he will profess unto so many, so many. 
I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, just a quick little breakdown, quick. <laughs> a little breakdown of just one verse. You see how much meat you can get in one verse? And to refresh, to finally close, let's read that again. Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 8. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding and the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, be mindful, be afraid, lest any man, mother, father, sister, brother, wife, son, daughter, whoever, best friend, okay, spoil you, rotten, stinking, through philosophy, the wisdom of men, the wisdom of this world, and vain, empty, deceit, lies. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. After the traditions of men, and not and after the rudiments of this world, sum that up, ministers of flesh. Ministers of flesh. Beware. Beware. And that's what the three C's, Catholicism, Calvinism, and Charismatics, that's what they do. They're all about fleshly signs and wonders, and their Kundalini spirit, Kundalini spirit that they get are just the spirit of devils. So that is going to be it for this video. Um, hopefully, hopefully this is, well, Hopefully this will help some of you. Um, hopefully it will. If not, then what can I say? But um, thank you so much for watching this if you do. Thank you for praying for us. Please keep us in your prayers. Uh, we need all the prayers. We need all the help we can get. Please continue to pray for us. We pray for so many of you. We love you. Um, we do. We, we pray for a lot of you. We pray for a lot of you. And uh, just thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Praise the Lord. May this help you. May this, um, may this fulfill in you whatever the Lord will have it to fulfill in you. So that's going to be it. Love you. It's 3 o'clock now. I'm going to get this uploaded. And um, yeah. So. We love you.